Hey, Mr. Maes is here, and we are going to be talking about volumes using disk method. So, in the last video, I went over cr um, known cross sections. This is just an application of those known cross sections. In this case, our cross sections that we're going to be dealing with are disks. So, basically, cylinders. Um, so, the volume of a cylinder is the area of the base, same thing, but the area of the base is a circle. So uh, the area of that circle is pi r squared. So notice here in my volume I have pi r squared. So it's the same idea as the known cross sections because I have the area of my, um, my cross section, which in this case are disks, which are cylinders. Again, a fly, sorry about that. Um, times dx, which is the width, and we're gonna have our uh, formula for the volume. Here's what happens with these that are a little bit different. Um, let's suppose I have the region bounded by y equals x squared, this is right here, and y equals 0 and x equals 1, and I rotate this, I rotate this about the x, I revolve it about the x-axis. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna, like, I'm taking this, this area here and I'm kind of like, like going around, okay? You know what, I've got an example, oh, so let me show you something. Okay, let's say I have like this, right? It's kind of like it, and I'm going like this. Whoa, look at that. I have a three-dimensional figure. See, three-dimensional figure. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to slice this three-dimensional figure up, and I'm going to get little disks that I'm going to add up together. So here's what they look like. Let's see if I get a pen here. Um, I'm going to take, basically what I'm doing is I'm, I've got this piece here, and I'm taking a disk and I'm finding the volume of that I'm going to add them all up together this again this is just a cross section that's circular um, that's a, a cylinder so notice here that the radius is from the x-axis to my function right so this is this radius that's r well what is that that's from my x-axis to my function so in this case r is my function x squared so let's go ahead and do our our integral the integral from 0 to 1 of pi r squared r in this case is x squared squared dx that's all there is to it all right that's all the, all we have to do and now all we have to do is do our uh, antiderivative like we normally do so um, x to the fifth over 5, evaluated from 1 to 0 pi, and we get pi over 5, Squ uh, cube, cubic units, or if you want to say cubic units, something like that, okay? So that's how we find a volume using the disk method. Let's take a look at an example where we revolve it around the x axis, the y axis. So let's say I have the same thing, x squared, and I revolve it around the y-axis, but we go from 0 to 4. So how, what does that look like? Well, notice here the radius goes from the y-axis out to my function. And it looks like since my um, disks are going to be here now, okay, this is my disk that I'm creating with a thickness of dx. My radius is, I'm sorry, a thickness of dy, because we're going around the y-axis. I'm going to have to make my integral in terms of y. So 0 to 4 pi, what is r? r is my x distance. So what I have to do is I have to say x is the square root of y, right? Because I'm going to just solve for x. So r, r here, r is equal to the square root of y. Okay, so r squared is the square root of y squared dy. And that's going to be my integral. So I'm going to go ahead and go pi from 0 to 4 of y dy. Why? Because, because I said so. <laughs> y equals, okay, I'm going to plug the 4 in there. And 4 squared, uh, 4 squared is 16 divided by 2. Okay. This is an 8, 8 pi cubic units, I guess we can say. And there we go. Volume 
using discs. See you next time, guys. Maestas out.